Hello, everyone. Um, this is my name is Claudia Schwartz, and I will be the moderator for today's panel on how to digitize your festival. And I'm very excited to introduce my speakers. Uh, first up, we have Robin Vandenberg. Robin, please join us on the stage. Second up, we have Caroline uh, Mukus with uh, Price Waters and Cupus. Please come on stage. And then last, <laughs> Tim with uh, Global Event Technologies Get, which you might have seen is on this wristband. So they um, are focused on cashless technology. So I'm uh, happy that you're all here. This panel will be conducted in English. You're welcome to ask questions in German. So please feel free to ask in both languages, and I will translate on stage. Um, we have an hour for this panel, so I'm very excited to have a little bit of time for you. And we will basically start with a short introduction. I'll ask you to introduce yourself in like sort of a minute to and a half, to two minutes, and then we'll start the discussion. Thank you. Uh, my name is Robin. I am the managing director for AppMiddle, and we built a music festival, applications, and event applications. Uh, and we have clients like uh, Tomorrowland, Rokambring, uh, Good Life, uh, some very exciting German clients uh, on a global scale. So, uh, yeah. Is it on? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Caroline. I'm director at PwC. And there I lead the IMOS team. IMOS stands for AI and Mobile Solutions. And we run there an AI-powered crowd management platform. And yeah, we will talk about that. Yes, and hello from my side. Uh, my name is Tim Moser. I am a co-founder and CEO of Global Event Technologies, in short, GET. And yeah, we are the provider of the access and cashless technology here, um, focused on uh, music festivals. In Germany, we do uh, Wacken Festival, Rock and Ring, Rock and Park. In Austria, Electric Love, um, Nova Rock Frequency. Not this year, but last year. Um, yeah. Wonderful. So uh, my name is Claudia Schwartz. I'm with the Federal Association for Music Technology. If you haven't heard of it, um, please check us out on our website. Um, and then we'll just get into the conversation, I guess. So we will start with um, a short description of each other's uh, model for the moder uh, for the speakers, and then we'll kind of ask. I, I will ask a couple questions. Feel free to join in at any point. We don't have a separated Q and A session, so we want to engage you as much as we can. So please just raise your hand, and then I will. Uh, Paul will be so so kind to come to you with a mic. Um, so, uh, Caroline, if I may, I want to start with you. Um, please tell us a little bit about your platform, uh, so we have a better idea of what you do. Of course, um, PwC is known as an auditing and consulting company and two years ago we started to invest into real technology. So we, brought a, we bought a startup um, that trained over 10 years in uh, artificial intelligence and neural network for crowd management and two years ago we bought this platform and with this platform we can analyze um, the movement patterns of visitors at festivals and there we try to understand um, uh, how groups of people tick at a festival and to predict their crowd behavior and that's in a nutshell what we do. And is this currently in beta or sort of in a development? It's is this currently in a beta phase or in a development stage? No, or are no, you already it's, implemented? It's, it's implemented with our customers. Do you have a couple of examples that you may, may be able to share? Yeah, it was used uh, for Rock and Ring 2018. Uh, it was implemented um, with a big folk festival in Bavaria that takes place every year in Munich. Um, uh, we did the Olympic Games in London. Um, we did a lot of... Um, uh, royal, public and um, political events and ceremonies in UK and the Netherlands and we use the platform for our public sector customers in um, uh, smart city and smart mobility projects. Okay, so it's very broad it's customer broad, yeah. Okay, got it. Um, Robin, if I may uh, kind of switch over to you, um, I think we have some slides from your company as well. Please go ahead and... and yes, talk. thank you. Um, Actually, we started this company 12 years ago in, uh, in the tiny but beautiful Belgium. Um, and back then, to give a little bit of perspective in time on how long we're already making these festival applications, uh, smartphones still had buttons and BlackBerry was the biggest. So that's a long time ago. Um, and we know what we do. Um, since then, it's been a, a nice ride for us. Uh, and this year, we already see 2.4 million app users on our platforms. And we serve around 120 festival clients around the planet. Um, the majority of what we do is happening in the music and life scene, uh, festivals and music events, but also we see now that there's an opportunity for us to extend our offering to other verticals like sports events, which is actually pretty much similar to a festival. There's a lot of people on a, on a terrain uh, looking not, not, at a, not at the music performer, but actually at a sport. Um, and also we have some conferences and, and we are taking our first steps into artists and brands as well. 
because we see that the applications are making an evolution from uh, information about timetables more towards uh, a year-round marketing tool. Uh, but I think we're going to explain that a bit later Let's on. Uh, that in this talk. Later, yeah. Okay, and you've kind of uh, gone through the slides already? Or? I didn't it's okay. I paid attention <laughs> to you. It's okay. Uh, right, Tim, maybe just a quick introduction of what you do. As mentioned, we, we are a provider of cashless payment access control. Um, we started seven years ago. Um, GET was a spin-off of uh, the Electric Laugh Festival, mm -hmm. so it was uh, developed uh, back in the days because Electric Laugh Festival had no solution for the payment, uh, no digital solution. Um, so we developed a solution. First, we started only with the cashless payment for big festivals, so only on the, at the point of sale. And after that, we added um, all the functionalities around access control to it. And now we see us as a, yeah, our vision is we digitalize events. Um, so we see us as the partner for all the digital applications on site. And as Robin mentioned, um, for us it's also important that we have a, that we work together on a good user experience from the ticketing. We don't do ticketing um, preload uh, together with Admiral uh, loading up money on, on the wristband on the account, going to the festival, uh, buying some food, making top ups um, on the day after before the festival starts again. So we try to optimize the user experience flow. Because in the end, we believe it has to be easy and has to be useful for the customer. Only then uh, it's good for the promoter. Yeah, very well. Um, just a quick check with the audience. Any questions so far? Maybe some hands up. Who of you is a festival organizer? One, two. Oh, that's unexpected. I thought it was like half, going to be half the room. OK, two, three. Um, Caroline, what are the biggest challenges that you're trying to solve with the platform service? The biggest challenge is to um, uh, to to a little bit, you know, shift the mindset of the event organizers because the event organizers are hes um, hesitating a little bit to use artificial intelligence to optimize their events. And um, what we're doing now is we um, try to show and demonstrate the benefits artificial intelligence can have for crowd management. It, artificial intelligence can bring so much to the table. It can create um, greater security. It can help to optimize the event performance. It can um, uh, support in creating unique um, e um, event experience for the visitors. And um, all the potential is is now not used in its full potential. So um, uh, we would like to 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 shift this mindset for the event organizers to use this technology in. For the events. By making it easy, kind of uh, yeah. accessible for them, that's sort of the relationship that you try to establish. Okay. So the main relationship you have is with the organizers and not directly to the consumers, not directly to, not directly to the audience. No, uh, our uh, clients are the event organizers or the cities or um, uh, um, you know security operators mm -hmm. and these kind. And what's the main relationship that you cater to? Like, what kind of customer relationships do you have? So same, we talk to the festival teams themselves. Um, we built the official application and information and communication are normally are, actually, when you see the evolution of what we did as a company, it all started with information. Mm -hmm. Who's playing at what stage? I can build my own calendar, I can build my own schedule. But what we see right now, that there's a lot more challenges uh, for these uh, organizers. Uh, one of the challenges is, um, how do we make sure that we can sell our tickets? Um, so it's a marketing challenge that they're facing. And the problem is that lots of the platforms these days, like Facebook and Instagram, they're controlled by Zuckerberg. And yeah, how do we give them some balance in their marketing mix? Um, and I think our application can solve that problem to make sure that uh, an organizer is there to, 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 to inform its clients without paying money every time. Uh, talk to the ticket buyer when they want it without yeah, every time passing by the cash register of Zuckerberg. And I think that is exactly what we try to do with AppMiddle. Give them an extra tool to, to communicate uh, and to sell to them and to connect to them and to gauge with them. Um, also, data is an, an extraordinary challenge that is uh, these days. How do we get to know our customer? We have ticketing data and we have uh, data on different silos, but it's not connected. And we need to connect the dots. Uh, and also, we were recently acquired by uh, a much larger company uh, last year, which is connecting the dots. And I think that the future of festivals will be mainly data-driven, and uh, we want to play in a very important role in that one. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you want to connect um, sort of your audiences year-round, and not just for the specific period of the festival. How do you do that? How many people engage 
once the event is yeah. over and how, how soon do they start? Good question. Um, so first of all, let's make sure that sometimes for festivals we, we reach 100% downloads rate. So that means that 100% of the ticket buyers also downloads the application to check about the timetable. So they have a, an enormous opportunity here um, to, to, to stay connected to their audience. Um, the problem is if that application is only showing them a timetable, then you will lose them. People will throw that application off their device. So they need to rethink their content marketing. They need to rethink what is the value that people will keep that application on their phone. Um, some of the values might be um, I get access to uh, early bird tickets, an extra early bird ticket sale for, for them. Or um, instead of the... Um, the uh, thank you. Thank you. Instead of the, the after movie of five minutes or the full photo gallery of day one, instead of throwing it on Facebook, we say put a little teaser on Facebook, but get the full experience on your own platform. Mm -hmm. Because then the sponsorship opportunity opens up. The more user attention they have on their own channel, the better sponsorship deals they can do. So it's this big puzzle that they need to lay. Right, to uh, keep people on the platform basically. To get people on yeah. their platform, yeah. So to that something that you mentioned as well, like you, you're focusing on using the data and making people understand the data better. So can you give an example of how you deal with your customers, your clients, how kind of to educate them on how they can better use the data and monetize on it? Yeah, so I, w I would say we have more the easy data because yeah, we with our system, a promoter um, is selling drinks, is selling food, is uh, letting people into a festival. So we have, uh, of course, a lot of tr uh, transactional data. We can provide to systems um, yeah, like, like you have. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, of course, we also try to help promoters um, to understand the data. Um, uh, a lot of promoters, they have already their own uh, business intelligence tools. We are completely open uh, on an API so they can get out every, all the data, so they can make their own reports, they can connect uh, their own dots to the ticketing, sales, etc. Um, we don't have yet an own uh, department where we have a consulting, like active consulting for promoters. That's something we would like to establish, but we don't have like, um, of course, we have a lot of data. We can recommend something, but we don't have an own consulting team, which is saying, hey, do that, do that. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of promoters. They, they do that already by, by themselves, just using the data. Um, and in most of the time, the data in our case are used for making the event more efficient, cutting opening times, uh, making uh, price adjustments, uh, making nicer deals, uh, flat rate things, uh, giving one beer extra if you come three hours earlier, things like that. That's everything possible with our system. And yeah, we, yeah, that's that's basically what what we do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any questions so far? Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, Paul, if you don't mind. Hey, uh, I have many questions, but I, I'll try not to <laughs> hog the stage too much. Um, okay, so I start with you, real quick. Um, what would you say is a decent setup time to uh, get an app running for a certain event or? The day after your event. That's the ideal situation, of course. But let's say if you're, you, need, you need at least a month or two months before to do the promo, that people get, uh, yeah, they see that. But what we also see is the first time when they launch an application, um, you need those three weeks. And we see especially a buildup at the event, even, even at the gates, people are still down on the application. But then the question is, for next year, you want to start as soon as possible, like you do for your website. It's normal. Okay, so if I have, um, if I'm in the planning stage for my event, um, how early would you recommend I get in touch if I want um, specific functions for the app for uh, the visitors, if I want a good map, if I want uh, a good timetable, all these integrations, how long would you say? Normally, uh, our uh, time from, from A to Z, to, from scratch to the App Store submit, it takes us around four to six weeks to submit an application to the stores. So, and the most of the time is us training you on how to use the platform, how to create cards, how to create these artists, how to create stage and performances, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. How does integration work with, uh, let's say, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? I don't we know. We don't. You we don't, don't integrate with Facebook. No, we wanna we wanna do the opposite. We wanna create <laughs> our own Facebook because then we uh, are at the triggers and we can get the money. Um, but we do have uh, an Instagram integration, but it's more like we are pulling 
the content of Instagram into our platform. So if they push something on their Instagram platform, um, we will automate it and put it into their newsfeed so that something is happening. A newsfeed that we also have, it's an important thing for activity in the application. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. All right, then I have uh, a couple. Can I just interact just for a second? Um, quick question. So you build customized app for these new partners. How often are you being surprised by something you haven't heard, like some a new request that someone hasn't thought of and you haven't thought of? And you have to build it from scratch. Not that much. Okay. Um, <laughs> we uh, typically we see. It doesn't matter if a festival is happening in in Australia or in the Netherlands or in or in Denmark the need of your festival visitor is always the same. Okay. So that's why we built a framework, we call it, uh, so that we can easily reuse the same code base in a modular and flexible way, completely branded to the festival. So the, the needs are pretty much the same. Typical questions that we get uh, was, can we have a photo filter? Or can we chat within the application? And our answer is always the same. People already have five ch chat apps on their phone stick to what you want to do to them and stick to the experience that you're providing. Don't try to create a lightweight WhatsApp because I don't have 5,000 developers to build the same experience and yeah. you don't have the money to build something similar. So it will always be less. So uh, less is more. I, I agree very much. That's the first recommendation to all of yes. the startups that come to us as well. Like, Don't start building the same no. thing. Yeah, got it. Sorry. Back to your questions. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, Right. Regarding AI, how do you gather the information um, during the day? How do you do that? We use the movement patterns of the people, of the crowd, and uh, we gather this information via the smartphones. Okay, so they have to log in, or do you uh, access a Google API and get no. it from... Like, what do you do? <laughs> Um, uh, we cooperate with an event organizer and um, uh, the, the only um, requirement that has to be met to work with us is that the event organizer has its own app and there we integrate our SDK, our software development kit and that contains the artificial intelligence and as soon as it's in integrated into the app the user has to give its opt-in and as soon as they give their opt-in we aggregate and use the data and then we conduct our crowd behavior analysis. Okay. And Caroline, yeah. what's your opt-in rate? If I, if you can, you're able to share that, it depends on the audience. It depends mm -hmm. on the um, on the festival. Um, uh, it's something between twenty and seventy percent. We need only um, a two percent at the size of uh, fifty thousand visitors, but generally we have something between twenty and seventy percent. Very nice. Okay, uh, from your exper experience, what would you say would be the the biggest? Um, the biggest and most useful use case for me as um, a festival operator, um, where, where, where do you see is the biggest value for me in, in this information that I gather from you? Um, the first is security. You can um, um, create greater security with the artificial intelligence because you know exactly where the people are for how long, how they move over site, and um, you can measure the flow and the density, and that's very important for you know, all the security measurements. Um, you can use it as well for event optimization. So if you want, uh, want to um, uh, you know, um, optimize the event performance, you are, your sponsors, the event, event organizers understand how is the people flow over a site. You see the critical paths between the infrastructures. So you can ask yourself, is the um, advertising space optimally used? Um, uh, did you use all the, um, uh, the, 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 the selling spots or the food spots? Or uh, can you create better offers for the visitors with these movement patterns. And the other thing is um, uh, the event experience. So if you want to create an event experience that is holistically, so you start not only at the um, uh, entrance control, but um, begin the journey with the customer as soon as they buy a ticket and you know share information with them, for example, with the location-based messaging, then you cre can create a unique event experience. And these are three typical use cases we, uh, we do with our customers. If I may add to that one, sorry. I think it's very important as an experience provider, you have a short amount of time where the magic needs to happen. So you have that one day, you have that five hours or six hours time window in which the magic would happen. So every time that they're queuing, every time they're doing something that they don't like, you're missing out on something. You're missing out on experience and you're missing out on revenue. So it's very important that in those five hours, you'd be in full control. Uh, and that's why technology can help uh, the festival organizers to stay in control, to, to proactively or reactively uh, engage with the crowd on site to do that. Um, and also what we see is that 
there's a lot of gut feeling still going on in the industry. And we are rapidly professionalizing. We are competing to football. In the weekend, there's only a few hours in the weekend that, that people will spend their leisure time money. So we are competing to football clubs. We are competing to all kinds of uh, kinepolis, uh, cinema, name it. So it has to be perfect. And you can't just rely on gut feeling anymore. It has to be data driven. And we need to know and measure what we do. And then we can make the right decisions to make the experience even better. And I think that's how technology from all of us can, can help the organizers to make that experience even better. Um, and it's not about just data collection, but sometimes it sounds bad. It's really about understanding your audience and understanding your client to give them a better service. That's pretty normal, actually. I very much agree. Yeah, I think to kind of um, challenge your own assumptions about how your event works. And I think uh, I've been a festival organizer for 15 years and you kind of just assumed that you know what's happening and then you were surprised every single time and you kind of had to act really quickly. And so this is a, a way to help and kind of uh, build a better understanding of your events. So I agree. Yeah, questions? just one last quick follow up there. Um, so the, the data, is that also avail available live or um, is it just after the fact? Uh, we deliver the whole spectrum of analysis, so you can do comparative analysis, compare, you know, last month with the, you know, the month before. You can compare to events, for example, um, but you can also use it for your operations and security management with your real-time an analytics, and you also can use it for predictive an analysis. So it's the full spectrum of analysis there. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful. Any more questions? Okay, go ahead, uh, Paul, if you may. I'll ask one in between. Um, so obviously we're talking a lot about data. So the first question that always comes up in that conversation is privacy. Um, does anyone want to take that question? Maybe Tim, like how do you protect the data of your customers, of your audience? Um? So, so we never own the data. We are just, I don't know the English word, Auftragsdatenverarbeiter. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Of course, we, we, we take it very seriously. Um, our servers are in Germany, um, so within the European Union, we have a regularly uh, security audit uh, by the KPMG. Sorry, it's not uh, PwC. <laughs> um, so we take it very seriously. And, and of course, we, we, we would never store credit card data because we are not a bank, so we are use uh, other services for that. But of course, um, if a ticket is personalized, um, in our database, there is personal data. And we connect it then to the cashless data, to the entrance data, um, and therefore we need to take it uh, seriously to, yeah, to protect the data. Mm -hmm. Robin? Yeah, same for us. Uh, we, depending, normally it's never our data. It's always the client's data. We are data processor and we will do whatever it takes that the data coming over our infrastructure um, is managed by the right tooling. I think the choice of our backend tooling, we work with Amazon, for example, mm -hmm. Yeah, don't, it's, it's one of the, the most secure um, platforms to, 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 to do all that. You can't build it on your own. Uh, that time has long gone. You have to use the big players, in, make integrations in every possible way, uh, and do regularly pen testing and name it all to, to, to make sure that everything is uh, compliant. But mm -hmm. our clients, uh, they make sure that we do that. So uh, no worries there. Well. Same for us. Um, uh, the slogan of our company is building trust and uh, we walked through a one-year process to make our technology 100% GDPR compliant. So um, we don't hide our SDK in the um, terms and conditions. We always ask the, you know, the user to opt in and they decide if they want to agree or disagree. So 100% um, transparency. Okay, good answers. <laughs> um, yeah, are we ready for the mic there? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, from the point of view of a festival goer, a person, especially music festival for the app, how much of your app can be offline? Especially in Germany, connection is a big, big problem. How much Same can in Belgium. Uh, uh, <laughs> at some point, we all think that 5G will clear everything up. The problem is that, um, yeah, once we go at a festival, we want to share with our friends on Instagram and TikTok uh, how cool it is to be at a festival. So we're, we're using... Uh, gigabytes of data to send all those uh, packages um, and the problem is there will be a connection drop. Our platform is 100% offline available, uh, the core functionality. Of course, we can't get up. If there's no connection, then we can't update the application. Um, but everything that you already uh, saw and everything that is already is being cached, then we can do so. The timetable, normally the users won't even know that we were offline, or they are offline. Um, so we try to catch as much as possible to make sure that 
it goes smooth. Once the connection re-establishes, then we can send out uh, all the data transfers again. It's just as an add-on store locally, as so cache, just so for if the audience, I don't know how yeah, technical even push the push reminders is. are stored locally, yeah. just for that, because um, some people also, when they enter the festival grounds, they, they go to flight mode because they want to save battery, which makes total <laughs> sense. But yeah, then if the application doesn't work, then then we have nothing to say anymore. So no, no, it works offline. Yeah. And about last minute changes, uh, changes on the schedule, or you for example, for that. Yeah. the rock and ring when there was this rain all the time and there yeah. was danger for people. Yeah. Would that be something that could be doable without? Um, yeah, push notifications. It's a very small package, so it's only a few uh, bytes of, of of data that needs to be transferred. Um, so normally these things they will pass through even with very slow 3G connection. Um, but if you want to uh, yeah, post a new video about something, of course, it will take some time uh, to load or not load. Um, so yeah. Thank you. But I think in general, there's always this connection between analog or at least a plan B for going analog if you have to. So I think the announcements for rain uh, that, that always came sort of on stage, right? So um, that's not all, all their fault if the connection drops. So um, anybody else want to uh, speak to the point of offline? We depend 100% on energy and internet. So if you want to make real-time analysis, <laughs> you need the connection. Yeah. And for us, it's the other way around. We don't need to network because all the data is stored on the chip. So we have uh, like offline first approach from the beginning on. Uh, we have all the online features, but only if we are online, but um, we can work um, without network. And I think that's very important because if you have a festival, uh, a cashless payment at a festival or access control, a digital access control at a festival, um, this is not a nice to have, like maybe an app is, is like a nice to have because we are a must have. Uh, if it's in place, it has to work. Uh, and it has it's also a to need work. to have. Sorry? It's a need, it's a to, need have. to have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I saw another question uh, up here. Hi. Hi, my name is Ivo. I work uh, at many festivals every year since eight years, and I'm selling uh, for JTI, American Spirit, a song, and I'm uh, mobile on the whole festival area. And for Get It, I like Get It the most from all the other uh, programs uh, or systems, but a, a big problem is that happens many often is uh, that a customer won't buy something and don't know how much money is on the chip. And sometimes they told me, yeah, I could check it on my phone, but they don't have the connection. And I have a tool, the Get It tool, and can hold it on it. But sometimes they, uh, they go to a cash station because they have zero euro on the chip. They go and they put it on uh, 10 euro, come back, and it's not on it. Is there any plan to that, get that? that that's straight? not possible technically, so it, it's always on the chip. So if any device from our side says there is money on it, it's on it, because uh, this information about uh, the balance is written on the chip. And how can the customer uh, check the balance? At every, if, if the pas a customer is paying uh, at your point of sale, yeah. um, you see immediately the new balance on the screen. Yeah, so he had to ask me every time. No, but, but if you're selling cigarettes, yeah. So, okay, it's six euros, and this is your new balance. Yeah, it's already on the screen. That's one thing. The other thing is uh, we had. Oh, yes. Yeah. Maybe Robin. Yeah. So it's a good question because it's actually a need. You need to step Very away from one. that um, important place you have now on the main stage to check your balance. It's again, you only have a small window, so we need to facilitate that kind of stuff. Um, uh, that's why together with Get, we are making a native integration, but we can't integrate everything. So it will be a semi-native integration. But for example, the ticket balance is something that we can cache. So when you open up the application, uh, we will do an API call to the database of Get to see what's the balance on your wristband. Um, that's something that we can definitely do. Same with transactions. Those are things that we can uh, do an API call. We can cache it on the device. So everything is also offline available. Um, of course, when you need to top, there will be a transaction in place, and then again, you need the connection. And I think we, we need to make that better. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we need to do next year, is to um, make that cashless journey experience a whole lot better. And I think the combination of a smartphone with a wristband, uh, it has a lot of opportunities. So this is highly on our roadmap for next year, so I hope that we can solve that or we can crack that problem by next year. That's the idea, 2023, summer. And how about the tip button? A lot of customers want to give tip and so on, and it's cashless. And uh, 
a lot of people would appreciate our work and at the most uh, cashless festivals there's no opportunity and some are very creative and um, You can always okay. say that. Also, Kannst du immer auf Deutsch sagen? Also, okay. ja. <lacht> ja. Ähm, die Becher zum Beispiel. Der Becherpfand, ja. haben manche gesagt, ein Cashless-System sozusagen. Sie würden es einfach den, lassen. Und, den ja. Becher mir geben sozusagen und äh, das wurde dann auch quasi ja. rausgelöscht und geblockt. Bei Wacken zum Beispiel. Mhm. Bei Rock am Ring. At Rock am Ring. Uh, is it easy? Is it easy yes, yeah, so you in say, English? Yes, there's a cup deposit. So many festivals for, re, uh, for you reusable uh, cups and so forth. So a lot of people kind of tend to just give it to the bartender and say, keep the deposit. I don't want the deposit back. But there's no way to do that technically at the moment. Yeah. Um, I think that's a question for Tim. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it, it works with our system. That's just a decision of the promoter if he would like to allow tip. That's just as simple as that. But we will also optimize our tip flow because at the moment, it's just an additional product in the, in the POS menu where I can type in a flex, we call it flexible or variable price. But we are thinking about to have an extra step for a tip, like, is, like it is on the on a classical payment terminal uh, in the restaurant. But that's technically it's just a product for us with it, yeah, which is called tip. Yeah, or maybe an option that you can say uh, when I buy something, maybe a five percent tip that you can do the option before you get on the party because some people are, yeah, on another way. Mm -hmm. and you mean for every transaction then? So automatically five percent on every. Purchase. As an option, because yeah, okay, when yeah. you go to the festival yeah. and you say, hey, I worked at that in the past, so I know that it's very hard, and uh, maybe I say 5% is okay, and um, that would be a good option, I think, and I talk to a lot of a lot of uh, customers, they always say, no tip button, uh, there's no, no appreciation option for us at the cashless uh, system. Yeah. So technically, yes, possible, good idea? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so social awareness and, and awareness for a lot of causes like sustainability, climate crisis and so forth is a very um, growing sort of um, a, a number of people sort of who are uh, adamant about this. Is that something, is there a donation function that could also be integrated in, in this tip function? I mean, because I, I like the idea of having a yeah. sort of at the beginning of the event, you say for every transaction I do, I want to have... 1% donated to this cause? Yeah, or yeah we exactly did something for, for mm -hmm. smaller festivals and, and we are thinking about to establish something also for the big festivals next year because technically we have exactly this solution that we have like, a, a te uh, if you go to our booth, uh, you can see our, our so-called smart gates. Um, we, can, we can have them configured as a pay gate. You just go there, just one, one tap and you would pay one euro to uh, whatever. Um, so that's that's just possible, and, and yeah, we have some clients um, who are using that. Can, and can sometimes you name also for examples or what kind of abuse cases have been happening in the past? It's, it was uh, event in Austria, um, live ball. It was um, yeah for eight, uh, mm -hmm. but it's it's not happening anymore. But they used our system completely for all the donations mm -hmm. um, because we also can generate those uh, donation receipts uh, for that you can have okay. it on in your. Uh, Accounting, uh, and that's something you can do after the event as well. So if someone decides I need this receipt after, I didn't yes, think yeah, about yeah, it before. Yeah. Okay. So we generate the receipt in real time, mm -hmm. but it's available uh, seven years later as well. Okay. Yeah. And just coming back to Robin, because you kind of responded to the question of uh, how can I check this with my mobile phone, for example. So this would essentially mean that you would hold your wristband against your phone and it would kind of read the balance. Is that what? what I think do you uh, best there's a QR code on the back of. Or yeah. it depends. Yeah, it really depends. So if you have a good integration, um, it, it everything. Uh, so in our case, it starts with the ticket. A visitor has a ticket, and the ticket is linked uh, either to our account or to Admiral's account. But in the in the end, we have to connect it internally. So if you go with your connected uh, wristband to the festival, the ticket is scanned. You get the wristband, and up from that moment, you have your wristband already in the Admiral app because we know that this is this is the same person. And that's exactly what I mentioned in the beginning. We need to look that the customer's experience is fluentless and that it doesn't, uh, yeah, it's, it should not be the, the visitor's problem. If uh, we have a good connection in the end, it has to be seamless over all mm -hmm. platforms. Um, yeah, there's single sign-on, one login, and getting all the, the complete flow. But this could also include an option of tapping uh, your balance, um, like uh, uh, increasing your balance on the chip through your mobile phone? Basically, it's not by tapping, but you, you click on top-up in the app and it mm -hmm. goes through the server. But yeah, technically, it's like 
you would so you you just go through the server once and okay. then to the wristband and not directly. But yeah, it but for in that case, you would need the connection because obviously that doesn't work offline, right? That's right. right yeah, but okay. you, you, yeah, you you can't make credit card payment uh, anyway if you don't have network. So that's and and this kind of collaboration is that something would that be a unique. Um, Collaboration or is something happening like that already with some other competitors? At, at this point, uh, we're doing it uh, web-based, but the problem with web-based is that there's no connection, then it will not work. Um, but yeah, we came from a COVID crisis, and I think integration cost everything. Uh, yeah, we need to, 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 to see where we put our development efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, but for this year, this is one of the highest things on our roadmap, and, and, and yeah, we should we should we should do it. Are we gonna do it? So it's uh, yeah, it's all planned. The, all the we power to you. I think it would be a really improvement. On there the, are no semi-native wallets at this point, and I think uh, yeah. we've done all the research uh, to prepare the backlog and prepare the roadmap. So we are aligned on what we need to do, and uh, we're gonna do it. Yeah. Wonderful. What's the timeline on this? Summer 2023. So uh, I'm gonna keep that a little bit. Uh, we out will of the check open. in on you yeah, if, that's if that's happening. Any more questions? Yeah, Ivo. Hey, just a security question again. Um, what is, uh, what if you're drunk, you're laying around, you're drunk, and someone uh, put your uh, band, you took your band, is there a, um, a security option to uh, secure the money on the chip? So basically, yeah, what would happen if someone is stealing your cash in your pocket? Yes. Um, it's for sure lost. Um, in our case, you can go just if you have this integration, like, like I mentioned, if you have the ticket added to your platform, if you have like this account, then you can just, um, then you can just disable your chip. So we can always disable chips. Um, but yeah, to be honest, there are not many cases where this, this is happening because the chip is always uh, secured on the, on the wristband. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. But obviously, okay. Evo knows how to party because if you lose your wristband, then obviously you must have had a good time. <laughs> yeah, at festivals, it depends on the festival. No, no, I'm, like I'm, I'm being Indian I'm, spirit or something. Being yeah. a bit cheeky, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, different. To <laughs> no, I understand. Um, you had a question, so? Again, uh, to the cashless payment. I don't hear myself for this. Sorry. <laughs> uh, as a festival goer again, taking for Vakken. You can only use like a week before the cashless, right? You can only start putting money in your wristband a week before the festival. Or can you put there all the time? You could already start. That's also a decision of the promoter. And, and yeah, with Wacken it was the first time. So of course we were not too early to be honest together. Um, but that, that is technology wise, it doesn't matter. So we have also client like the Formula One in Austria. There you can also upload now because it's it's one card for the whole racetrack, a bull racetrack, which you can use at every event. So, I was yeah. thinking more of a, like a savings plan. I go to Vakken ah. every year, and if I start now, I put money every month aside and, and yeah. for data for the promoter, of course. Yeah, see maybe how much a good I idea. Um, yeah. there. Of course, you can also use like Klana Pay Slice, Slice Pay from Klana, um, but technically also not, not a problem. But we, we don't have it integrated. Okay. Good loyalty program. Yeah. If they do the right things, then you can give them some beers already throughout the year. But maybe one thing to add, uh, what some promoters are doing is uh, if people are uh, loading money on the wristband before the event, that they get 10% extra. And that, that's really pushing uh, the, the top-ups. And what we found out, uh, it's a logical thing, uh, of course, if, if there's m more money in the system, more money is spent on site. And yeah, the people who are topping up before the festival are spending uh, on average 30% more on site. Yeah, just as a um, sort of additional comment on this, um, during COVID, I mean, obviously now we're challenged to have less money available, cri different crises, COVID, so forth. And I think a lot of uh, payment providers are coming up with plans that work for younger people or a younger generation who really have to do this lay layaway plan. Uh, so Klana is a good example for um, concert tickets as well. It's a Swedish app. I think uh, it's very popular in Germany as well. So in a lot of um, regular banks are following on this and also uh, credit cards. So I think that we will see a lot more of these plans where you can actually have a little piggy bank for your merchandise spent or for your food spent or so. Any other questions? <laughs> yes, or <laughs> you? you want to? Uh, I think she has the mic. Uh, for the um, for the payment of the chip, will there be an automatic recharge after the festival? Is it planned or something? Because it's planned for next year. We don't have it integrated. It's quite quite easy at the moment. You need to request the payout. Uh, you need to type in uh, your IBAN, 
mm. and then you get it. Um, yeah. But yeah, that would be quite a logical step to just push it back to the credit card. Uh, the only challenge you have here is the money laundry. So if you have like a top up with uh, 100 euro in cash and 10 euros in credit card, you can only get back uh, 10 euros uh, on the credit card, uh, at least in Europe, because of money laundry. Oh, okay. Yeah, so maybe to stir the conversation into a little bit of a different um, direction. So we've talked a lot about seamless integration and sort of a, a really fluid um, experience. And I think part of that is also connected to security and feeling secure and, um, yeah, this awareness. I think this, this speaks uh, a lot to your platform, um, Caroline. That's, I think, one of the features you're focusing on to assure that there are heat maps available and people can react quickly if there's, you know, uh, some debris from a stage that might have, you know, kind of some technical issues or so forth. Can you maybe speak to that a little bit? Of course. Um, security was one of the major issues that, that drove us to develop this technology. So um, uh, we want to provide a secure and safe event. Uh, so we support the event um, organizer to understand how the behavior of the, of the, the, the groups is going to be and um, uh, to understand where, is the, where, where the density is too high so that we can see if there's a bottleneck or you have to intervene with security personnel and so on and um, uh, to organize the flow of the people over a site. And do you have any integration in your uh, platform or an app or something where you connect with the organizers in case there is an immediate threat, like a bottleneck or something at the entrance? Or? Yes, um, you can use it for um, uh, you know, predictive um, use cases that you can see in 10, 15, uh, half an hour or 60 or 120 minutes there's going to be in, you know, at a, a place where the crowd is too, um, where, 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 too the, dense, the, like the place is too, too yeah. dense and, um, and then you can intervene there in a in more wise way um, uh, and uh, you are, of course if you see there's a place where it's too crowded um, uh, you can send there immediately someone there and then they can take picture, pictures, they can you know, advise the people to go away or it's a real time analysis too so you see you know, what's happening there in and, and how does this work practically? So I am an organizer, I have a team of 30 people and maybe five day managers, and they're connected to your platform and there's an automatic um, sort of uh, push notification, you know, there's, uh, there's a problem coming up in this area, or do you have another team on your site that is kind of manually texting people and saying, this is happening right now? There are two things. Um, you see on the dashboard um, uh, the density of the crowd and then you can intervene or the people are in the crowd and then they can communicate back to the command and control center and you know, share their observations and then um, they can send pictures, they can send messages. We have as well the location-based messaging function in there. So um, if, you, if you have a stage, there are too many people, you can you know, select this group and just um, send them a message and uh, warn them, be careful, go away and use another stage, for example, because it's getting too crowded. So we have all this real-time um, messaging functions there. Mm -hmm. And how much of your platform is customizable? Like how, how flexible are you if there's a specific festival with like a very specific arrangement of, of stages or different floors? Like how, how agile are you? Every festival is unique and we um, are flexible to 100%. We want to um, uh, make our platform useful for every customer uh, and for their needs. So um, uh, whatever there is, we can you know, adjust. Um, and there are some use cases that are recurring, so we know very good um, uh, what are their general needs. But of course, if a customer has any special requirement, um, uh, we address that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, any questions from the audience on this? Yeah, please. Uh, I would have questions regarding the regular territory requirements for cashless payment systems. Uh, for once, am I suddenly regulated as a bank, as a event organizer? And second, uh, what are the implications on tax law? And are these systems regulated like a cash register with like the new TSE standard in Germany, for example? Uh, what are the consequences? Yeah. So the first question, we we, we don't um, getting the funds. So if you are topping up money here on the cash stations, it's always in this case on Pay One, which is a bank. So we just like uh, just a technical partner. Uh, but we never touch the funds, uh, and also not on a festival. If, if, if they are accepting cash for the top-up, we just provide the technology, but the cash handling is always on the promoter's responsibility. Uh, that's the first question. Yeah, second, uh, you're right. Um, there is a new law in Germany, the TSE. In, in Austria, it's, it's, it's called different. Um, yes, we are, we are also certified in, in Germany and also in Austria. 
So if you are spending uh, s some euros at the bars here, um, you, you have online uh, in the event portal, you can get your receipt, which is uh, also with a signature on it uh, from, from uh, the yeah, financial authorities. So the data would be stored in the cloud, I suppose, at your company, or how does it work? It, it's a private cloud. It's, it's in a private uh, data center in Germany, but it's a private cloud, yeah. Okay. But we also have some, uh, some uh, services on Google Cloud. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? You okay? <laughs> no, it's not on Get It. No. Um, <laughs> One question: uh, Would it be possible to get um, to get access to the heat maps during the festival? Because uh, this year at um, Southside festivals there are some there were some uh, situations where too many people come together and it started to get really uh, that the people get. Do you mean as panicked. an audience, as a person yeah, as who's attending, or, or for me as a setter, so to orientate and. Um, yeah. That would be a good thing because at the Southside Festival, after Seed was coming, it was very, very, mm -hmm. very uh, tight, and I just got away because I, I I felt that it could be panic. Yeah. So, would that be a possible? It could be possible, of course. It's technology, so you can make everything possible. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because you know to understand a heat map, you have to um to you need some knowledge about the metric and you need some knowledge to. And um, make the interpretation of you know the density there. So you have colors, you have you know uh, numbers and so on. And to really um, come to the right conclusion, you have to understand a little bit the technology. And when someone is not tr uh, trained on the technology and on the metric, on the philosophy, and they can misinterpret um, uh, the, the the heat maps and and could in, you know it could happen that the panic rises. Although there is no um, reason for panic, so I wouldn't recommend to to give this information or the seat maps to the audience. Um, uh, what I would recommend to every um, event organizer to start a good communication strategy because you have the location-based messaging function there, and with that you can communicate with the audience and where in, in, at places where it's too crowded and can inform them. But it's. Um, in my opinion, it's better to have it one way, and, and the other way around, the people are not trained for that. It's just an option, and when you have just, okay, it's blue, it's okay, and when, right. then it gets darker. But people need to know oh, what, what does blue mean, what does red mean, what does green mean, so, you know, That's everyone... Easy. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, you can have an emphasis... Never underestimate them. Excuse me? <laughs> Don't underestimate them. Actually, yeah, you we also have a responsibility as a technology provider, right? So that's always the tricky... Like, how do you help people? How do you actually over... Uh, yeah, kind of. Oh. I kind of disagree, uh, and I can agree with you. Uh, we, we, with all the respect, we have a similar technology going on uh, at AppMiddle, um, and we use that that kind of data. And I think uh, real time is one. That's real time for the promoter, but even more real time is giving the power back to the audience. Because uh, how can we make sure that if you want to do an action, I want to go to the toilet. I want to know if it's busy or not. Or, or I'm at one part of town and I want to go to another part of town. I want to see if the venue is full or not. So that is something that we have incorporated in the, into our interface. That we, we call it a traffic light system. And it's red, orange, and green. Um, and based on the location data, we can see if something is red, orange, or green. And indeed, we trust that that is uh, easy for the people to understand. If it's red, then it's closed. Uh, and if it's green, then it's, then it's open. With the heat maps, I do follow that it's not always uh, that simple to visualize that, but we already did for two festivals where we can incorporate the heat maps into the, uh, into the actual interactive map. Because you're navigating on a map, and it Which makes sense that you see if you want to change your location, if this is the right choice, yes or not. And we're coming back to the same thing. I'm only there for five hours, so if I need to make that 30-minute walk and it's crowded, then I'm screwed. So I don't want to do that. I want to know up front. Um, so I think that there is some kind of a solution needed there, indeed. But, but I think the point is to find a way to translate that into your, you know, uh, the, into the personal device of a user and not to, between sort of an event organizer, a security, head of security, or a, a scientist or a company who provides the technology and the actual personal user. So I think, and that translation seems to be happening in your app, so I, I applaud sort of that system. And we've seen that at different showcase festivals already. And, and so I think that's a good direction. But or I, on I the big screen, sometimes in conference, you can yeah. see it on a big screen. 
do you see where the, the, the crowd is moving or what is happening? So, yeah. yeah, it's very similar to an airport, right? Like yeah. security check-in on this side, you know, you might have to walk there a little bit, but it's much quicker than staying in the main lane, so yeah. But Robin, just one question. Um, you would see your solution also like just a recommendation for a visitor, right? But not as a source for a security manager. Because then it's, it's because you cannot trust 100% on the, on the data, because if the device is offline, um, yeah, you think there are no people in front of the stage. Or how do you see that? True, but you can always, um, at some point, we also did friend finder. If you need to, um, you have to add something like, uh, it was updated two minutes ago. Yeah. And, and if you're offline and, and it has a, a, a visual reference saying, yeah, this is only updated 30 minutes ago, yeah. then it gives you the idea that, hmm, this may not be real time. Yeah. So I think it's, it's definitely the point. If you're visualizing something and it's not correct, then you, you need to let them know when was the last time that it was updated. Um, yeah. yeah, because how we do it on, on small areas, on VIP areas, that, that we are counting in with turnstiles in and out. So we exactly know if the promoter says, um, on this stage, uh, on this uh, floor, there are maxim maximum uh, 5,000 people possible then it would not work with a technology uh, like your technology because it's, it, you cannot guarantee that this is the right data because not everybody has it activated and not everybody has a smartphone uh, yeah. maybe on site. You don't need everybody to, uh, to, to use it. Um, for us, um, as I said before, uh, with 50,000 people, we only need 2%. This is uh, the 1,000 people who need to opt in, and then you can aggregate the data and um, uh, have a good analysis basis. But of course, for security issues, I really recommend that someone you know, looks after it, who's experienced enough with it, for convenience purposes, or for avoiding queues or something like that, that can help, of course, it's very nice. But for security issues, um, it can can you know put pressure and um, uh, fear and panic on the people and it and some are cool and relaxed when they see these kind of ha heat maps and I wouldn't and uh, guess or I, I, I wouldn't estimate that all the people are always relaxed and chilled so I would leave security with the security people absolutely I, I think that's a very important point to make that it's always a combination of uh, people being smart enough to use technology and people being educated on how to use it and yeah. Um, any more questions from the audience? Because I think we might need to wrap up quickly. Uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time on this panel. Uh, maybe for a last round, um, we haven't talked about business models. So if you could, uh, each of you, really briefly say sort of what the business model is, who's paying what for what kind of service, just as a rough estimate. Um, then, uh, yeah, that would be my first question. And the second one is, um, where can people find you during uh, fe future festivals? Here, maybe tomorrow? And how could they con contact you afterwards? And the third question is, what's your vision for the future? Sort of what's the future of festivals? Right. Uh, so first question. Um, I think don't see a festival application as a cost. You should see it as an investment. And I think that 75% of our clients are making money on their application. And, and making money, it's logical because we haven't discussed this, but sponsorship is a huge thing. And the problem is that even at a festival, we are running around our smartphones at an event. So billboards or flags or banners, it, it's not that relevant anymore. You need to give your sponsors also some digital stage time. And having an application for all the other stuff that we've discussed will also allow the sponsors to be embedded in that digital uh, experience. So that means that um, adding these sponsors in there in a non-intrusive, not like Facebook, but in a non-intrusive way, that could easily pay the bill for not just your application, but your entire tech stack, your entire marketing stack, uh, uh, even your security stack uh, that you need. So I think that should be the business model. Besides upgrading the visitor experience, you can lower your marketing cost and you can hire your revenues on sponsorships. So that's good. Um, we're right over there uh, in the booth. So if you want to talk to AppMiddle, uh, we're uh, on the left side here a little bit further. Um, and the third question was? What's your vision for the future? And oh, you yeah. have about My 30 seconds to do that. Uh, my vision on the future, I think that, um, as in other industries, um, festivals should work on loyalty programs. Uh, 80 or 90% of the ticket bias is recurring, so it makes total sense that you give them some kind of value um, um, for that recurrence, for that loyalty. So I think that customer data and seamless journeys like we're doing, that will be my idea on the future. But definitely that technology, touchless, uh, it will a big part, uh, being a big part of the future of festivals. Yeah. Thank you, Robin. Caroline? I start with the vision. Um, uh, our vision is the three S. We want to make events smarter, safer, and more sustainable. 
Um, so we have planned a few new features for uh, the next year. Um, uh, the business model question, um, uh, what we want to do is we want to give insights um, uh, for um, event organizers they haven't thought about before. Um, so we are not only data driven, we want to be data inspired. We want to give them ideas you know, they have never th um, thought, uh, th thought about before. And uh, the third question was about the booth. Our booth is uh, right over there. <laughs> there you can meet um, Sophia, Nariman, and me. And uh, you can also connect with us um, via LinkedIn and or write us an email or just drop by. Wonderful. Tim? Yeah, our, cash is, uh, our, cash, our, our uh, business model is uh, based on visitors. Um, of course, cash as payment access control is, is not a cheap thing, uh, to be honest. Um, but we are enabling a lot of tools on site. Uh, we are providing all the hardware for, um, yeah, so we're the only hardware startup here. We are providing a lot of hardware for the point of sale, which is in the end expensive. Um, uh, yeah, what, what can I add here as well? So what we also saw, once we do a festival, they really, they, of course, it, it, sounds, it sounds expensive in the beginning, but when they use the tool, they see all the data, they see all the advantages they have. And, uh, I would say uh, or we, we never lost a customer uh, which uh, went back to cash. So that's for me a thing, okay, it, it really makes sense. Um, but we are not focusing only on, on cash as payment with uh, wristbands. We are, all, we are a hybrid payment company. We also offer cash uh, uh, payments with uh, credit card, debit card, and also Apple Pay. So uh, we see us not as the closed loop uh, payment company, but uh, we see us as the company which is providing technology for payment and access control on events. First question. Uh, second one, uh, our booth is just in the middle of, the, of this hall, uh, F01. We are also hosting a small uh, party at uh, 6. You're all invited, free beer. Uh, so please, please come. <laughs> um, and the third question, the vision. Um, we see us as a technology leader. We try to adapt to the, to the, to the needs. We have all our development in-house. We try to be... Uh, to grow with our customers, that's very important for us. We have a, a lot of long-term uh, relationships with our customers. Uh, we are fully API-based. That's also why we, we, for us, it's quite easy to integrate because we believe it's very important to adapt to different partners. Um, yeah, and, and we try just to develop uh, technology uh, on, on events, but we are not focused only on the wristband payment, as, as I mentioned, uh, but more on, on the idea itself. And... One last thing, uh, we don't know yet where it will go, but we know or we, uh, we believe that it will not be cash at the festival at least, so yeah. <laughs> one certainty is always yeah. good, yeah. So one topic that's super important is um, that we haven't really touched on is sustainability. Uh, Caroline mentioned it briefly. I know it's a very important topic for you as well. So with the last remaining two minutes, um, maybe your idea on how to address sustainability within your um, business models? Yeah, so we also started a, a project. Um, it, it started with simple things like paperless office. Uh, we have electric cars. Um, we try to ship at less as possible. And that, that's maybe also one of our biggest advantages that we work. Uh, if you go to our booth, we work with small devices on the point of sale. So um, if we do a vacuum festival, which is for sure one of the biggest in the world, um, it's, it's about one, one truck. So one 3.5 ton truck uh, or maybe, maybe two, uh, 7.5. Uh, one 7.5 uh, ton tons truck, um, and we really believe that that we yeah that we are not producing a lot of CO2 um, with our solution. Caroline, excuse me. Uh, on, on the topic of sustainability, yes. mm -hmm. okay, um, uh, ESG and sustainability is one of our major topics for next year. So we want to support all the ESG reporting. Um, uh, what we do is modality sensing. So mm -hmm. our technology is so advanced and, uh, and you know um, uh, data driven that we know exactly how the people um, come to a festival, what um, means do they use to go there, and there we can advise organizers um, or the people themselves to um, get greener in their um, you know travel travel behaviors yeah increased number of trains going to the site and so forth yeah Wonderful. getting the insight so that they understand um, how they you know go there and how green they are and also advise them and we have an, a function to compensate their ungreen behavior mm -hmm. so Robin? Um, for the mobile application, it all started a few years ago or, or, or uh, uh, a small uh, decade ago that they have a printed booklet and by the time it came from the printing office, it was already wrong. 
because there was a change in the program or a sponsor didn't pay, uh, so it was always wrong. Um, so don't print out booklets anymore, I would say. Use the application, you will save a lot of trees. Um, on the other hand, also I think it's important um, also for the tickets because don't let the people print out their tickets. We can use virtual tickets for that, Apple Wallet, but also our own in-app ticket wallet. And for the rest, we can only support sustainability. So all the initiatives that there are at the festival grounds, we can inform them about it. Um, and that's what we can do. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for, so much for the insights into your business models. Please feel free to uh, contact the, the panel uh, speakers. I'm also available if you want to talk to me. Um, and please check out also the booth of Music Declares Emergency, a very important initiative. I think they're over by a stage uh, two. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time today. I hope it was interesting. And thank you all for your attention.